Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's devotions. It's good to see everybody here today and watching on live stream. I'll tell you what, we're going to have a great day today. It's going to be a hot one. It's going to be 115 degrees today. Well, not quite 115. They're saying 112. But you know what? It's still going to be hot. Aren't you glad that we only have school until noon? And you can be home in the afternoon where, when it's really hot out. And you don't have to sit in school where it's real hot. I do. And uh, so, all right, let's all stand up and say our pledges. And we'll get started. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. I pledge allegiance to the flag for Let's start it all over. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all you've done for us. I pray now that we might get something out of these devotions today that we can use in our own lives. And we'll give the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. All right. You know, this week I've talked a lot about being fruitful and faithful. Um, you know, but have you ever thought, what is it in it for us for being fruitful and being faithful. What do we get out of it? Do we get anything at all about being faithful? Do we get anything out about being fruitful? Well, I'm glad you asked those questions because you know what? I'm going to give you the answer today. And uh, the title of today's uh, uh, devotional is Reward for Faithfulness. Rewards for Faithfulness. Now, um, if um, we do something that, that's good, You'd like to get a reward for it, don't you? If you do good in your paces, if you do good in your, your studies and stuff, you expect a good grade, don't you? So that's a reward for you doing good. Well, I want to look at some things this morning about rewards for our faithfulness. What about soul winning? You know, if a person goes out and they tell somebody else about the Lord and, and they lead somebody to the Lord... Um, what do you get out of it? What do you get out of, of being a soul winner? What do you get out of door knocking? What do you get out of, of doing things and trying to lead people to the Lord? When well, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, it says, And they that were wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness to the stars forever and ever. You know, there's going to be a reward for those who win souls to the Lord. You know, anyone who leads someone else to the Lord is going to get a reward one day in heaven. Do you know what that reward is? That reward is a crown. There is a soul winner's crown in heaven. That means that uh, if you lead somebody to the Lord, you're going to have a crown or a soul winner's crown in heaven. Now, what happens if you lead two or three or four or five or six or seven people to the Lord? I believe, I can't prove it by the Bible, but I, can, I believe that there's going to be jewels put on that crown. I believe that when you have a soul winner's crown and, um, in heaven and you lead many to the Lord, you're going to get jewels put on that crown. Now, there will be people with lots of jewels on their crown, and there will be people that may only have one jewel on their crown. And we need to realize is the more people that we can take and lead to the Lord, the more or the bigger our reward will be in heaven for our soul winning efforts. But what about being a humble servant? What about being a humble servant? In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, when we do things for the Lord, we should not be looking for gratitude or monetary things here in, on the earth. You know, if you take and you do, say you clean the church or clean the school or do some, take out the trash. 
You shouldn't be looking for a monetary reward here on earth because there's going to be a reward put up for heaven in heaven for you. You know, many times there are things, you know, done around uh, the school and the church and, and people don't really want any gratitude for it at all. They just do it out of the love of their heart for the Lord. And that's the kind of attitude that we need to have. You know, I think of hundreds of people who have volunteered to help in the food bank over the years and how many uh, uh, have done it so unselfishly and not expecting anything in return. And that's the kind of attitude that we should have when we're doing things for the Lord because there are going to be many, 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 many rewards put up for, in heaven for us for doing that. You know, there's a crown for faithfulness uh, in heaven as, as, as well as a crown of, for soul winning. And we need to realize that we can get a crown for helping others that way. What about being a faithful steward? What's in it for that? In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 33 it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You know, what does it mean to be a faithful steward? What is a steward? Who can tell me what a steward is? What is a steward? What's a steward? Anybody know? It's someone who gives of themselves for something else. I'm going to show you in, in just a second. We need to be faithful with our time. We need to be faithful with our time. A faithful steward is faithful with his time. What do I mean by that? Well, we need to use our time for the honor and glory of God. We need to take and use our time for what God wants us to use it for. You know, we shouldn't spend time on our phones all the time, playing games and uh, um, texting and things like that. We should be reading our Bible and things like that. That's how we use our time wisely. What about being faithful with our talents? What about being faithful with our talents? I had a video that I wanted to show Emma. Um, there was a, um, a family of children, and one of them played the violin, one of them played the banjo, one of them played a ukulele, and another one played the guitar. And they were playing uh, really cool uh, gospel songs. They're uh, Southern gospel. It was really, really good. Uh, the, the guy on the ukulele, he could really, really play that thing. It was really cool. But, uh, uh, but you know what? That, that's, what our tr the, uh, that's what our talents are. You know, God has given each of us a talent to do something for him. You know, some of you might be able to be good singers someday. You know, some of you might be able to play an instrument. You know, like Serena. Serena learned how to play the piano, and she's doing a really good job on playing the piano. You know, what we need to realize is God has given us talents to do that. You know, I look at Michael. Michael, he's a good shot with a shotgun. He is. You take him out and start shooting clay birds, and man, I'll tell you what, he does a really good job at it. Susan's the same way. Susan's a good shot. And those are talents. You know, what we need to realize is we need to use our talents, though, for the honor and glory of God. You know, I look at Mrs. Storm, and Mrs. Storm has a talent playing the piano and singing. And she uses them in church. You know, she plays piano every Sunday in church, and she's done that for many years. But what about faithful with our tithes? What is a tithe? It's not something we wear. What is a tithe? A tithe is money, okay? A tithe is a certain portion of what we make we should give back to God. The Bible says that, that Abraham gave of his tithes back to God. Uh, um, Jacob gave tithes back to God. Now, there's many that believe 10% of whatever we make should go back to God, and uh, that would be our tithe. That's what's owed God for what he has allowed us to have. And what we need to realize is we need to be faithful with our tithes. But not only that, but we also need to be faithful with our testimonies. How can we be faithful with our testimony? By living your life in accordance to God's word. 
You know, if we would take and we would have a good testimony with those that, that are around us, they would take and see things change in our lives, and they would want to maybe be like us. Maybe they want to get saved. I heard a guy speak, la not last night, the night before, and he was telling of a man that he had led to the Lord, and this guy, over the years, his life changed. And everybody, nobody could believe it was the same person. But his testimony was different from what it had been before. We need to use the things that God has given us to be faithful to further the cause of Christ. But what about being compassionate? What kind of a reward do you get for being compassionate? You know, in Luke chapter 6 and verses 35 and 36, it says, But love ye your enemies and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. You know, we need to have a compassionate heart. You know, someone, um, if someone's in need, we need to help them, especially if they're a brother or sister in Christ. You know, that's why we have the food bank. Because we have a compassionate heart. Our church has a compassionate heart for those who come to the food bank. Today I'm purchasing a forklift. The forklift is kind of expensive. And it's not going to be a toy for people to play with. But the reason we're doing that is I want the people who have a compassionate heart and work in the food bank to be able to do the job that God has called them to do without getting hurt. And uh, uh, so we're going to have that, and we're going to be able to use that for unloading trucks and things. But, you know, many times people will not give to someone because they feel they will get nothing in return. You know, I have a philosophy, and it's this. If someone wants to borrow money from me, if I don't need that money, I'll borrow it. But if I need the money for myself, I won't borrow it. And what I mean by that is when I borrow somebody money, I do not figure I'll ever get it back. And that's the way it happens many times. Many times people will borrow money and they'll never pay it back. Well, if you don't have the money to just give it to them, then don't borrow it to them. And that's what this verse says. It says, but love your enemies and do good to them that... Uh, be, and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. That means that, that we should hope for nothing to come back. If you give someone something and they don't give it back to you, don't worry about it. Because the rest of that verse says, your reward shall be great. That means that your reward in heaven is going to be great. You know, what we need to realize is if you cannot afford to let it go, don't give it. Uh, also, good for all nations. In, in Romans chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, it says, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. You know, people all over need to read this verse right now. They do. They need to read this verse. With everything that's going on with the protests and the Black Lives Matter and all this stuff, they should all read this verse. I'm going to read it again. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. You know, God said there is going to be glory and honor and peace to all those that work good. Now, God has a reward for those who work good in his eyes. And we need to realize that there is no difference in God's eyes who we are. Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. You know, it doesn't matter if we are, what color we are, what race we are, anything else. God loves everybody the same way. The last thing is this. We'll receive good for good. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 6 to 8, it says, 
not with eye servant as man pleaser, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bound, uh, bound or free. You know, if we do good things for men, we are going to receive the same from the Lord. If we do evil to men, we're going to receive the same from the Lord. It doesn't matter who we are or what we are. If we do good, we're going to receive good. You know, think of doing your work at school. If you do good work at school, you're going to get a what? Good grade. If you do bad at school, you're going to receive an evil grade or a bad grade. And so we need to realize that we need to take and do good in everything that we can do. You know, God is going to give us rewards for the good things that we've done for him after um, we've been saved. And God is, you know, God keeps a record of everything that we do. Did you know that? He has a, a book and he's writing everything down in there that you do good. But he's also putting in things that you do bad. So you need to realize that you need to do good and not do bad. You know, all of us need to realize that we do have rewards coming for faithfulness. Even though we may not see them while we're here on the earth, but someday when we get to heaven, we're going to have rewards put up for us in heaven for doing good and being faithful to what we've been called to do. You know, each of you are called to be in school today, aren't you? And you need to do good today so that you can say, well, you know what? I did my best. I got everything accomplished I needed to get done. And uh, now I can get a good grade. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all you've done for us. I pray now that you'll be with us, guide us, and direct us as we go to our classes. Help us have a good day today. I thank you for the ones that are live streaming today. I pray that they might have got something out of this uh, devotional and that they can use it in their own lives. We just pray now that you help us and guide us in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We got a lot to do. Where were you yesterday? Why? Where were you supposed to be? No, you weren't. You're here every day. Every day. Got that? And until you can get your work done, you're going to be here every day. Is that understood? All right. All right. We got work to do. Let's go. Have a great day today. Get everything done. Be faithful because there's rewards for it. Thanks, Dana.